great-grandmother of my two daughters turned 100 a few weeks ago in Taipei. But my wife got a message last night to say she's in hospital and this might be it. She flew out last night. It gave me some perspective these past few weeks about the years I've lived and the years I have left. Especially given I'm almost halfway to 100, had my children late in life, my wife is 10 years younger and she'll probably live to be 100 as well. Based on my own life experience and the synthesizing of others' wisdom, I've started applying my Read, Write, Execute framework to three major phases that we all go through in our lives from birth to old age. It's a macro view where we pull back to see the larger picture, but it also zooms in to see the micro actions which can propel and grow us throughout our lives. They help to keep us on track. In parallel, a macro in computer programming is a rule or pattern that specifies how a certain input should be mapped to replacement outputs. Applying a macro as an input is known as macro expansion. So let's code this macro view of our lives. Let's run the input of our basic human needs through it and expand our view of what's possible. If you've followed my newsletters so far, you'll know I regularly come back to this framework, which is based on the command line code in old school Unix operating system. It's the precursor to the more well-known Linux OS, which Android phones run on. I learned the foundations of Unix when I lived in Scotland, working in the IT department of a human genetics unit during the early era of the internet. I ran daily backups of research data and managed the permissions for users to access various files and folders. Read, write, execute refers to the permissions of a user to access those files and folders. To change permissions, you run chmod, change mode, and then numbers which apply to varying levels of access. 777 is the top level giving full permissions to RWX or read, write, execute. The SU or super user is the system uh, user who has the root access to make all of these changes. My personal read, write, execute framework then is a metaphor for personal growth and autonomy. It's about giving permissions to ourselves to become super users in our own lives and work towards a permissionless future where we can take full control. This leads to my theoretical command line, chmod888, a hidden command for infinite and permissionless ownership of our future. The ultimate growth hack of our very DNA. You should know, I like building a narrative. Before we delve into these three phases of our lives, let's see them alongside the basic human needs that weave through the timeline of our lives. I'm going to call this our lifeline of needs. Maslow's hierarchy of needs is a well-known model of human needs. It usually is depicted as a hierarchical pyramid. Instead, I've taken influence from this and aligned it to our age brackets that show a progression throughout each. Just a note here, as always, there's overlap, but this helps to consolidate the hierarchy of needs as they take precedence through different stages of our lives. Initially, we concentrate on fundamental physiological necessities such as sustenance, hydration, respiration and rest. As we age, the pursuit of stability and responsibility becomes prominent, encompassing aspects like healthcare, financial security and domestic stability. In our youth, these fundamental needs are typically met by caregivers, which allows us to focus on growth and learning. As we mature, we begin to independently address these needs, though they often center around our personal benefit. Progressing through life, our psychological needs intensify, particularly the need for love, belonging, and establishing deeper connections with others. 
During this stage, we not only take care of ourselves, but also begin to nurture relationships with partners and, for some, our own children. Approaching middle age, our focus shifts towards realizing personal achievements and gaining esteem, with an emphasis on earning respect and acknowledgement from our peers. Beyond the age of 45, as we embrace the concept of freedom as a mental construct, our aspirations turn towards seeking a deeper sense of purpose, fulfillment and self-actualization. This phase of life is about reaching our highest potential and making a lasting impact in the world. Now, let's delve a little deeper into these three phases. The read phase of life is 0 to 25 years. And during this phase, spanning from birth to young adulthood, we are predominantly in a macro state of learning and absorbing information. Just as we read or gather data from our environments, People in this age group are gaining experience in a sort of read-only practice mode of life. On a micro level, we are of course writing all this information to our memory and executing through behavioural development all the time. In terms of our overriding mode at this stage of life, we are learning foundational skills, we're understanding social norms and receiving education. Known as the read era of the internet, Web 1 was largely about consuming content without the capacity to contribute or interact with it. This is more reflective of the 0 to 25 age group where individuals are primarily learning from the world, acquiring knowledge and skills that will later enable us to contribute meaningfully to society. They are preparing a more interactive role in life just as the early internet prepared us for more participatory future with Web 2. We then move to the right phase of life, which is 25 to 45 years. As we grow as individuals, we seek psychological needs such as love and belonging. In adolescence and early adulthood, people start forming deeper relationships and taking on responsibilities that require interaction and contribution. The right permissions in a Unix operating system allow users to modify the contents of a file or folder. This is akin to the read-write era of the internet, which is Web2, where users could not only consume content, but also create and modify it. Think social media, blogs, and wikis. The read-write era of Web2 opened up the internet to user-generated content and interaction. This mirrors our personal development into adulthood, where we begin to contribute to society and build more significant personal relationships. And then we move into the execute phase of life, which is 45 and upwards. In later adulthood, people often seek fulfillment and self-actualization, striving to realize their full potential and leave a legacy. This mirrors the execute phase, where actions are taken to bring about significant change or results. In the Unix OS, execute permissions allow a user to run a file as a program. In the context of the internet, then, Web3, this can be seen as the ability to execute or engage with decentralized applications, or dApps, and smart contracts, which carry out specific actions on the blockchain. As individuals in the stage of personal development, we are looking to make a mark and effect change. Web3 users are empowered to be part of the governance and decision-making processes of platforms that they use, and we're empowered to own the value that we build. So to boil that down, the read era of personal development and Web 1 is primarily about consumption of information. The right era of Web 2 corresponds to contribution and interaction, and the execute era of personal growth parallels the deeper values, empowerment, and legacy building of Web 3. Let's dive even deeper into what we can do through these stages of life to take advantage of this permission paradigm. In computing, the read permission allows the contents of a file to be viewed by a user. For directories, this permission allows users to list the contents of a directory. 
in much the same way, the read component in my framework starts with learning through the consumption of information. This encompasses everything from reading books to blogs and formal education if you want to practice the discipline of learning in a more institutional environment. But nowadays, it's self-driven learning that has the greatest potential, from short courses in e-learning to YouTube or ChatGPT. But there are two types of learning in life. There's studied and experienced. Combined, these equal knowledge. They're both equally important, but in our younger years, learning to deep dive for information and apply critical thinking is the skill that will prepare us for life. I'm not going to assume, however, that everyone has the privilege of higher education or even the luxury of free time in their youth. The reality is many young people have it damn tough and they're out there just doing it on their own. Generally speaking, though, the responsibilities from our teens to early 20s are for jobs that can mentally clock out. They're good life experience, but typically they serve to earn a buck. I mean, hell, I was cleaning offices after school when I was a teenager, or washing dishes in cafes. So these responsibilities are more to fend for yourself. It's not to diminish the importance of that, but it allows a greater degree of mental and emotional capacity compared to the responsibilities of starting your own family or a career job where you never fully clock out. That's why those who end up with a family in their late teens or early 20s and have to work multiple jobs to make ends meet have it particularly tough. It allows a little time to educate yourself and break out of survival mode. Interestingly enough, the ones who take on responsibility for others from a younger age, such as siblings or even their own parents, tend to have a high degree of potential for success. The circumstance that puts them in that position in the first place can come with emotional baggage, but the ones who use that to fuel their purpose have gone on to be some of the strongest and most capable people that I know. When adversity and diversity look in the mirror, they see their future selves smiling back. They're named capability and adaptability. While the emphasis in this phase is on consuming knowledge, you've got to begin documenting it for yourself. That might be a personal journey or a Notion account to document and link together all the sources of information and the process of your ideas. By all means, execute and put ideas into action as well, but treat it as a project or an experiment to test out what you're learning. Some of the greatest inventions have come from experiments, and the garage enthusiasts are often trying things that 99% of the population just won't understand yet. So keep at it, but don't expect it to happen overnight. So if you do start a business under 25, go into it with some perspective and tell yourself this. This probably won't be what I do for the rest of my life. It's just the beginning of what I'll do with my life. No matter how much potential your idea has to succeed, view it as a stepping stone to greater things. The right balance of confidence, enthusiasm, and realism will earn you more respect than anything. Finally, my biggest piece of advice for those under 25 is to realize that experience in these years is like a practice run for life. I would highly recommend getting involved in interest groups and clubs, whether it's for music, hobbies, cultural groups, or sports. Learn the art of participation from a young age. If you're willing to take it further, become a youth leader and join committees for these groups. I've always put my hand up when I was younger for committees. Uh, it was really valuable experience, whether it was the Youth Choir, the Psychic Research Society, mm -hmm, or the body corporate for the apartment building I lived in. Getting an understanding of governance principles at a young age is just truly invaluable. So this combination of documenting and experimenting it starts introducing our write and execute disciplines, which take precedence more in later years. In computing, the write permission allows the contents of a file to be modified or deleted by the user. For directories, this permission allows the user to add, remove, or rename files stored in the directory. 
It's the ability to change the contents or state of a file or directory. Aligning back to the history of the internet again, our write phase also parallels Web 2. This second era, in contrast to Web 1, was marked by the rise of blogs, wikis, and social media platforms, which empowered users not only to consume content, but to also curate, create, share, and interact with each other. Just as write permissions allow for the alteration of files and directories, this phase in our life is often marked by a greater capacity to modify our life's path. This is a period where many of us take significant steps in our careers. We start families, establish homes, and engage more deeply with our communities. The ability to write our narrative becomes far more pronounced, with increased resources, skills, and the confidence to make impactful changes. Just as the Web 2 era democratized content creation and participation, we find ourselves in a position to contribute and participate more in society. This era of life mirrors the interactive nature of Web 2, where the emphasis shifts from mere consumption to active contribution in the form of ideas, leadership, innovation, or community engagement. This period is also marked by the sharing of our knowledge, skills, and experiences, and contributing to collective growth and learning. So if you started documenting just for yourself in the younger years, now is the time to begin publishing it if you haven't already. No matter what your profession is, the practice of giving back through mentoring and training is a massively undervalued skill in life. It sets us up for phase three, where the greater purpose of giving back takes on a lot more meaning from 45 years onwards. The right permissions also symbolize the ability to edit and refine one's personal and professional identity. This phase is often a time of significant growth, where experiences and challenges lead to deeper self-awareness, skill development, and clearer sense of direction. The empowerment to write our own story is closely linked with the pursuit of personal and professional fulfillment. Just as the Web 2 era empowered users to leave their mark on the digital landscape, the later years of this phase are a crucial period for establishing one's influence and beginning to think about the legacy we wish to leave behind. If you asked a 25-year-old what has been a seminal life experience, a majority will say it was getting out and seeing the world. They're not wrong, as long as they got off the tour bus and immersed themselves. Experience is taking part in life, not just observing it. That means making emotional connections in the world and experiencing the highs and lows of love and loss, taking calculated risks, being afraid to lose, but still doing it anyway. In another 20 years, if you ask them again, I guarantee they won't give the same answer. In computing, the execute permission allows the file to be run as a program by the user. For directories, this permission allows the user to access the directory's contents and execute files within it. To continue our parallel with the development of the internet, we can also look at this period as Web3, where users can take ownership of their digital footprint and secure a legacy on decentralized networks. You might think you have it all figured out at 30 or 40, but 45 onwards is when you take all that experience and put it into real action. In the lead up to 45, we start to crave the freedoms of youth. We tap into that inner rebel, and we remember that there's more to life than the status quo. This runs deeper than a midlife crisis, which sometimes plays out as an external expression of this. In a world that's conditioned us, however, to believe that there's more meaning in money, we're starting to wake up to the reality that the fleeting achievements based on short play status games are just not enough anymore. This doesn't mean we stop trying to make money. It means we just realize it could be done as part of something greater than our own needs. We start to seek a, a deeper purpose to what we do and provide value back to the world. That trigger can be anything from kids flying the coop, career changes, burnout, or health scares. An awareness of our own mortality sets off a dormant part of our psyche, coded in us from perhaps ancient times. 
Like inscribing stories on a wall, we too need to leave our mark on the world. How do you want to be remembered? Who will remember you and why? You've been writing your executable program from the start, even if you didn't realize it. You were laying the foundations and the wireframe of the interface back in your 20s. You were coding it in your 30s, and then you did the beta testing and the debugging in your 40s. Now you're ready to execute and totally change modes to super user. But why wait until you're 45 plus? If you have the self-awareness to work through all of this early in life, go for it. The progression I'm outlining here is just a natural progression based on societal norms that we operate within, particularly in Western society. Just be aware that the genuine experiences of living life are what drive the strength of our resolve to make change for the better. You can't fake experience and you can't manufacture knowledge. For most of us, there may be a three to five year leeway on either side of these three phases. And there will always be the outliers who achieve significant impact in their younger years. I say impact rather than success because throughout life, success tends to take on different meaning. Something that feels like a huge success when we're 20 may pale in significance to what we deem as success in our 40s. Considering my own journey through this timeline, I don't entirely fit the mold, but I didn't produce this for myself alone. I was a late starter in many respects and an early adopter in other ways. I did my share of life experiments between 25 to 35, including three failed businesses alongside a mixed career between web development and television. But the experience and knowledge I gained propelled me into what I consider a successful career in brand marketing from 35 to 45. And I may never have landed that without the stepping stones to get there. Those 10 years also introduced me to what a late starter can actually achieve. The founder of the brand I worked for started his business at 65 when most people are retiring. And he had an incredible level of purpose right from the start. He was the perfect example of building your belief system in your early years from experience and in an industry that desperately needed change. He regularly told stories of his formative years, which taught him about giving back to the less fortunate. That brand went on to become one of the 10 biggest tea brands in the world, and unfortunately he died last year at the age of 93. His sons and their grandchildren have now taken over the family-owned business. But his life fits this timeline to a T. I used to go to sleep as a teenager listening to vinyl of Edith Piaf singing Non je ne rien, non je ne regrette rien. Excuse my French, if not my singing. I live by that and I have no regrets in life. I launched several of my own businesses, but I was always too early. I was importing craft beer from Australia to New Zealand before there was a market for it. I was building a gamified tourism business in 2004 before we had funding and resources to scale it further. I bought the master franchise license for a designer retail chain and launched the first store just before the GFC, the global financial crisis of 2008. The businesses failed. I didn't. I learned a lot from those ventures and even now if I went back and did it again, I don't believe they would have worked in the circumstances. Throughout all three of the life phases that we've covered, the principles of read, write, execute continue to spin like a whirring flywheel of growth. Each supports and amplifies each other. You'll always be learning, you'll always be engaging, and you'll always be putting your knowledge into action. Don't be afraid to fail. The only failure is not finishing with your best foot forward. <laughs>